I want to do a quick overview of theory of the firm so that you have an idea of what you're trying to learn as we go through the next few steps. Theory of the firm can be broken into two major parts. The first of those is just looking at how a firm is built. Not built as in conceptualized, but looking at the various parts of any sort of business. So we'll go through how production occurs, and of course the costs that go along with production. Then we'll look at the revenue and how that situation might change. And then once you combine those two, revenue and costs, then you can start to talk about profit. In all of that, we're working towards figuring out, okay, well, what are the possible outcomes for a business? Um, can it profit? Can it, can pro can it profit uh, more than normal? If it's not profiting, what kind of choices can it make? What can it do? Um, so that'll be kind of the conclusion of that first part of Theory of the Firm. You'll see in this a lot of tables, a lot of numbers, a lot of graphs. You can look at something like this and know what it means pretty quickly, even though right now you're looking at it going, huh, what does that mean? Um, so anyway, that's the first part of Theory of the Firm. Once we understand how theory of the firm works or how a firm operates and how it might make its choices based on that, then we start to look at the idea of decision making and how different types of firms can make decisions differently. So as we often do in um, any sort of social studies course, we look at two things that are the exact op opposite of each other. That is, a monopoly would be where there's one business controlling the market and perfect competition is our idea where there are so many businesses that no single business has any effect on the market. So here, one business has all control, and here, every business has no control. In between, we find two other models, which are monopolistic competition, which tends to be closer to here, and oligopoly, which tends to be closer to there. So we'll look at those four different types and analyze them. And again, look at how the anatomy of a, of a firm might change based on how the, how the firm, what type of uh, firm it is. Um, and of course, we'll look at outcomes and things like that. So in, primarily, that's looking at how much power does each firm have? What are the possibilities for a firm? Can it control the market or does it just have to do what the market tells it to? And then what does this mean for other groups outside of the firm? What does it mean for the government, for consumers, foreign producers, things like that? What we'll find out in this, or the conclusion of this second unit, is we have this ideal, which we call perfect competition, which doesn't really exist. For the record, a monopoly doesn't really fully exist either. But what we'll look at, or what we'll say, is that perfect competition is more desirable than a monopoly. In almost all cases, we think that it's better for consumers. But of course, it's economics, so we'll talk about sometimes where actually a monopoly might be better for the economy. It might distribute resources better um, than other market forms. Keep in mind in this, this is none of this is about training you to be a better business person or anything like that. Still in this, we're looking at resource allocation and how can we optimally distribute things for society.